The concrete column is reinforced using four steel rods, each having a diameter of 18 millimeters. Determine the stress in the concrete and the steel if the column is subjected to an axial load of 800 kilonewtons. Young's modulus for the steel and the concrete are 225 gigapascals respectively. So the first thing that I'm going to do is draw the free body diagram um, of the situation. And from that, I should be able to use my equilibrium equations to develop some kind of um, relationship between the force in the steel and the force in the concrete. So if I take the side on view, I've got this 800 kilonewtons that's acting down through the center. And I'm going to assume that it's spread kind of equally across the whole um, surface so that we don't have any localized effects of that force or anything like that. So this force is going to be resisted by both the concrete and the steel. So they're going to provide opposing forces back upwards um, yeah, to balance it out. So because this is kind of symmetric, we would expect that the force of the concrete could be simplified onto a point force through the center um, of the block. Similarly, these are all distributed equally as well, the rods that is. So they should be applying a force that can be simplified to a point straight through the middle. Now, I can't draw both of them straight through the middle, so I'm going to draw them really close to each other um, in the center. So one of these is the force being taken by the steel rods, and the other one is the force being taken by the concrete. So applying my equilibrium equation, that's sum of forces in the y direction, I'm going to have the concrete plus the steel force minus the 80,000 uh, kilonewtons which is applied. I'm going to put this into newtons, so it's 800,000, has to be equal to zero. Now, my goal here is to determine the stress in the concrete. So I'm going to need to know what PCON and PST are um, to be able to do that. Now, at the moment, we don't have enough information to solve this equation on its own. So I'm going to need to call this equation one, and I'm going to need to find a second equation to be able to solve with it simultaneously. So this is where our compatibility conditions come into play. And these are about relating together the deformation of individual components in your system. So what I'm going to assume is that when I force this 800 kilonewtons downwards, it's going to compress both the concrete and the steel. And if that's the case, and they're stuck together really, really well, if one of them changes in the length, the other one should change an equal amount in its length as well. So the kind of compatibility condition that corresponds to that is that the displacement, axial deformation, um, through the steel must be equal to the deformation experienced through the concrete. So if we want, we can replace this with the form that's PL on AE for our axial deformation. And same thing for the concrete. So what we end up with is this P here is the P for steel, which is what's in this equation. And this P here is the P for concrete, which is also what's in this equation. So provided we know everything else that sits in here, which we should, um, we're going to be able to solve these two equations simultaneously. So substituting in, we'll start with P for steel. That's our unknown. We need to multiply it by the length of the steel. Now, we're not actually given that um, length in here. But what we do know is that the length of the concrete is going to be equal to the length of the steel. And this appears on both sides of the equation. So if this L is equal to this L, which they are, they're going to cancel out with each other. So I'm going to cancel these. So we then need to divide by the area of the steel. And this we can calculate based on the fact that we know we have four rods and each of them has a diameter of 18 millimeters squared. So I might just calculate this separately and then we'll substitute it in. So the area for the steel rods is going to equal pi on 4 multiplied by, now I'm going to put this into meters, so 0 0.018 squared, and then we have four of them, so we need to multiply that area by 4. So we end up with a cross-sectional area for the steel of 0 0.001018 and it's going to be in meters squared. While I'm here, I may as well find the area for the concrete. So we know that it's going to be the difference between the outside area of the square 
um, and the four different rods. So in meters, that's going to be 0.3 times 0.3, that's the area of the square, minus what we got here. So 0 0.001018. So we end up with a concrete area of this in meters squared. So let's jump over here and sub it in. So we've just said that the area for the steel is equal to this. Um, and the other thing that we need is Young's modulus for steel. And we were given that, we're told it's 200 GPA. Cool. So now we just need to fill in the other side of the equation. So we know that P for the concrete is the unknown that we're going to need to solve for. We need to divide by the area of the concrete, which I just worked out down here. And we need to multiply it by Young's modulus. And again, we were given that back up in the question. For concrete, it was 25 gigapascals. So from this, we should be able to get a um, relationship between steel and the concrete. And if we go ahead and I'm going to get P steel on its own, so multiplying all this up to the other side, we end up with it being equal to 0 0.0915 times whatever the force in the concrete is. And this here represents our second equation. Okay, It's got the same two unknowns as what we had back here, so it's just a case of now solving simultaneously. So if I substitute equation 2 into equation 1, We get this, so it's a bit messy. So putting these two together, we get 1.0915 times the force in the concrete, and shifting this, it's 80,000. So the force in the concrete is 80,000 divided by that, and we end up with it being about 732928. Now, because I used every single thing in base units, I definitely know I'm going to get newtons out at the end for this. And if you want to um, just round it, I guess, because it's quite a large number, you definitely could. Um, that would be approximately equal to 733 kilonewtons. So the other value that we need is the force in the steel. And we can get that from going back up to equation 2 and substituting in. Now I'm going to get it in newtons first, and that comes out to be 67063. And of course, again, if you want to round it, divide by 1000, and you're going to get 67 kilonewtons. So we've now identified the force in each of our different um, components. But what we were asked for was not the force. We were asked to find the stress um, in both the concrete and the steel. So the final step is just to convert these numbers into a stress. So if we start with, um, let's start with the steel. So our equation for normal stress is equal to the force divided by the area. So the force that we found in the steel is this value here. I'm going to substitute it in in newtons. And the area of the steel we pre-worked out as well. And because both of these in base, are in base units, I'm going to end up with base units out for my answer, which is pascals. So this is 6.589 by 10 to the 7. And of course, that's a really big number. So if you divide it by 10 to the power of 6, you end up with your answer in megapascals, which is so... Alright, so now what we need to do is now find the stress in the concrete component. Same process. So stress is equal to the force divided by the cross-sectional area. We found that the force inside the concrete was this in newtons. 
and the area for the concrete was this in meters squared. So we've got everything in base units, which means that we're going to get um, pascals out at the end for stress. So it's 8.237 by 10 to the power of 6. And if we divide by 10 to the power of 6, let's round it as well, we're going to end up with 8.24 in megapascals. So that's the two answers uh, to this question. Um, and there's another compatibility example in the following uh, video. So I'll see you there.